What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Sorry I haven't posted in a little while, been busy with non-poker related things. I know, crazy. Honestly, I hardly believe it and I've been the one doing them. Uh, for this one, I try out a brand new casino that I've never played at before, South Point. I've seen a few other vloggers play there and while I was in Vegas, I wanted to give it a shot. Let's get right into the game. In my second hand sitting down, we look down at Ace Queen Offsuit. You love to see it. I barely even got my chips out of the rack, and right away we're getting into it. Cutoff opens to 17. In the small blind, you generally want a three better fold, and Ace Queen Off certainly qualifies for a three bet. So I raised to $42. Now the cutoff raises again to $142. He has about $150 behind. We are out of position, and this certainly looks strong, but I'm not really in the business of folding Ace Queen pre flop all that often. I make the call. The flop comes. Above average, ace, queen, four, two clubs. I check in flow, and the cutoff goes all in for his remaining $150. We have blockers to both aces and queens, so the hand we're most likely to be up against here is pocket kings, maybe even ace king, both of which we are miles ahead of at this point. I make the call, pretty excited to get it in. We run it out, and what is the second worst possible card you can think of in this spot? If you said the king of hearts, you'd be right. My heart immediately sinks, and I know even before he turns his hand over that we've lost the hand. The river is the seven of spades, and the cutoff turns over black kings. Once again, we're unfortunately starting off in a hole after getting it in good. Ace queen is quickly becoming one of my least favorite hands. In our next interesting hand, we have king nine suited in the cutoff. It limps around to me, so I open to $10. The button calls and the small blind calls. We're three ways to a flop of queen six five, two spades. The small blind checks. We have a strong flush draw here, so I'm perfectly happy to keep the betting lead. I continue for $15. The button folds and the small blind makes the call. Turn is now the king of hearts. Small blind checks. We've now improved to top pair to go along with our flush draw. I bet out $30. Small blind once again makes the call. The river is now the four of hearts. We've bricked our flush draw. Seven eight gets there, but I don't really see seven eight hanging in there unless it's specifically seven eight of clubs. Not really sure what we're up against in this spot that would call pre-flop on the flop and the turn without raising. Uh, I feel like two pair or a set should have probably raised by now with a flush draw on board and a straight draw out there. So. Kinda hard to put my opponent on a specific hand here, so I make the call, and we get shown King Queen off. I am a little surprised that we didn't see a raise on the turn from this hand. Uh, with top two pair and all those draws out there, I think you should raise with this hand every single time, but he decided to play it sneaky and certainly got us good. In our next adventure, I look down at Ace-10 offsuit in the small blind. There's an open from late position to $22. As mentioned in the prior hand, when you're in the small blind, you generally want a three better fold, and I think this hand could go either way. So naturally, I decide to just call. We're heads up to a flop of Jack-9-4, two hearts. I check, our opponent bets out $20. We have a gut shot, backdoor hearts, and an over. So I make the call. The turn is the eight of spades. Once again, I check, and our opponent now bets out $50. Well. Our straight flush dream that was so close is dead. Our opponent is playing this as if he has an over pair or a very strong draw. But we've improved from a gut shot to an open ender, and we can always bluff the river if we don't get there. I make the call. The river is a very interesting card, the four of hearts. At this point, all we have is ace high, which is very likely no good here. I could check and give up, but this four of hearts alters the board pretty dramatically. Not only does it bring in the flush, it also pairs the board. This board has a ton of juicy possibilities. There are straights out there, flush, you could even have a full house here. This is a fantastic card to jam on because even if our opponent is reasonably strong in this spot, there are likely to be a ton of hands out there that we can represent that he loses to. A big bet will, at a minimum, put him in a very tough spot. So I go with my gut and jam. He immediately hates it. This flush, flush, right? What else? He makes the fold and I show him the 10 of hearts just to keep him guessing. Nice to take down a pot with a well-timed bluff. Hey guys, real quick, sorry to interrupt. I was gonna save this to the end, but YouTube's told me that most people don't watch all the way to the end, so I wanted to get this closer to the beginning. After I left South Point, I was a little dejected. Uh, it wasn't a big loss, but you know, you're never happy to walk down. And then I was picked up by the coolest Uber driver I've ever experienced named Ahmed. He is a fan of the vlog. For me, this was a really big moment, meeting one of you guys in real life that isn't one of my friends uh, who I make watch this vlog, someone who found it online and chose to watch weekly. He was a really cool guy. Uh, I recorded a quick clip with him in the Uber on the way back. Wanted to include that here. Shout out to you, Ahmed. Hope you're killing it, man. 
What's your name, man? My name is Ahmed. Ahmed? H M E D. Ahmed, my Uber Ahmed. driver. A big fan of the sh big fan of the channel, Ahmed. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks for picking me up, bud. <laughs> really nice to meet You're you, man. Same I just watched your vlog. The last one I just watched it yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, you played, I think... Uh, the one with the, the Pocket 7s, I think, was yeah, the last yes, one? Yes, Yeah, no, that was a tough seven. hand at Aria. I saw that, yeah, yeah. Aria. Yes, <laughs> yes. I saw That's that. cool, man. Yep. I ended up switching to seat nine for filming purposes. As I've mentioned before, I really prefer seats uh, one, two, and then eight, seven, or nine, eight, depending on whether you're playing eight-handed or nine-handed. You can just see the table better. In this one, there's an open for middle position to $12, the hijack calls, the button calls, and I'm in the small blind when we look down at King-9 suited. In the small blind, you generally want a three better fold. Getting a very good price here, I make the calls well. The flop comes ace, nine, deuce, two diamonds. Checks around to the button, who bets $25. With second pair and no backdoors whatsoever, I make the call. The other two players fold, and now we're heads up. The turn is the seven of diamonds. I check. The button slows down and checks back. This is just the opening we need. The river is the six of hearts. I now take the lead and bet out $50. Representing, um, of course, not a whole lot, if I'm being honest. Luckily for us, the button doesn't have a whole lot either and makes the fold. The button later told me he folded an ace because he was afraid of the flush. Looks like showing that 10 of hearts paid off, huh? Huh? In all seriousness though, I really don't like the way I played this hand. We kind of just got lucky because the button is a bit of a nit. And if I'm temporarily incapable of getting it in good and holding, we're just gonna have to bluff. We're in the small blind once again because why play poker from a position of strength when you can just keep making things harder on yourself? That's big brain stuff right there. Anyway, we have pocket queens. Early position raises to $15, middle position calls, the hijack calls, and I decide to raise things up to $60. Pretty easy to follow your own rules about three betting when you actually have a hand. Only middle position makes the call and we're heads up. Flop comes ace, queen, five, two hearts. In the past, and as is about to be reflected here, I tend to lead towards checking in these spots to try to trap my opponents. I have come to learn that this generally isn't the best move, and more often than not, we should be betting here. However, in this instance, I do check. Our opponent checks back. The turn is the six of spades. I've already misplayed this hand a little bit by not checking the flop, so let's try to make up for it now. I bet very small to $30, almost like a block bet sizing, seeing if we can induce our opponent into raising here. But our opponent isn't falling for that trick. He simply takes the ridiculously good price I've given him and makes the call. The river is a total brick, the two of spades. The main draws all miss, so it's time to put an ace to the test. We're really not gonna get called by anything other than an ace in this spot, so it's okay to size up a little bit. I bet out $100. Unfortunately, our opponent folds pretty quickly. We didn't get paid on this one, but always nice to flop a set. This hand is a fun one. We look down at pocket nines in early position. I open $12, middle position, the button, and under the gun, I'll make the call. We're four ways to a flop that I have very mixed feelings about. Ace, nine, deuce, all clubs. Monotone boards are a bit scary, but we do have middle set and there's an ace out there. There's a good chance someone has caught a piece of this. I continue for $25. Once again, I don't really like my sizing here, on a board such as this, we really need to charge all those hands that contain a club. This should have been more like $35 to $40. Only middle position makes the call, button and under the gun both fold. We're heads up to a turn, which comes a jack of diamonds. Pretty safe card to continue betting. This time I make it $60. Middle position pretty quickly shoves for about 100 more, so 166 total. Uh, this seems very likely like a flush to me, but we're getting three to one odds and we can always improve to a full house if we are in fact behind. I make the call and we're off to a river, which is a miraculous two of diamonds. Let's go, yes. Our opponent tables his hand immediately showing that he did in fact flop a flush with the queen 10 of clubs. So we suck out pretty big time on our opponent in this one. I'm very happy to take this hand down. Could there be a turning of the tide? Let's find out. For our next hand, I look down at Queen Jack offsuit and the hijack. There's an early position open to $12. I make the call, and now the button raises to 50. This is a new player who's recently sat down at the table. He has glasses on, earbuds, hoodie up, very typical looking grinder type of guy. I kind of want to get involved with him and see what he's made of. So I make the call. We're heads up to a flop of 10, 9, 2, two clubs. I check. Our opponent bets out $50. This board should hit my range significantly harder than his. He has a lot of ace high hands and over pairs based on what he's repping right now, whereas I'm much more weighted towards smaller pocket pairs, which could have hit a set here, straight draws and flush draws. It just so happens we do have one of those hands as we are open-ended, so I make the call. The turn is a three of diamonds. I check and he checks back. Just the opening we needed. The river is the four of clubs. Now, I didn't call this guy just to go fishing and fold if we happen to miss. I think I'll get a ton of credit here if I rep the flush. Plus, 
There's a very good chance our opponent just has two overcards here. Even if he doesn't believe I have the flush, there's not going to be a ton he can do against a large bet. So I bet out $100 and he snap folds. If we can't actually make hands today, we can certainly rep our range and make some well-timed bluffs. Very happy to take this one down. In our last interesting hand of the session, we're once again in the small blind with 7-6 of clubs. He limps around to me and I raise the $13 because that's what my cards add up to. We cut off in the button, make the call. We're three ways to a flop of queen, eight, four, rainbow. Not a whole lot going on here, just a gut shot, but we do have the betting lead, so I continue for $15. The cutoff and button both make the call. The turn is the seven of hearts. We still have our straight draw and now have a pair to go along with it. I continue for $30. Once again, both players make the call. It's almost like I should be sizing up. Who would have thought? The river is a very interesting card, the six of spades. Any five makes a straight, but we have a very sneaky two pair here and I'm gonna keep the pressure on. I bid out $80, hoping to get a crying call from a queen of some sort. The cutoff very quickly raises to $140, which isn't even a legal raise. The dealer quickly corrects him that it needs to be at least 160 and he tosses in the extra $20 with no problem. The button folds and now we are in a spot. Our opponent was so eager to get that raise in that he didn't even bother to count out the correct amount of chips. I mean, this is just never a bluff, right? Really? What kind of five do you have, man? Pocket fives? Hmm. 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 Interesting spot. This is an interesting spot. I have a really good hand, but I just feel like there's no way you do this with worse. Eventually, after working through the process... Fuck it. This is never a bluff. I fold. I fold. Yeah, that's what I feel. It's the only hand that made sense. Yeah, we're good. Maybe I should have sized up a little bit more on the turn and it would have got that fives hand to fold, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this hand overall. In the past, I would call that river almost every single time rather than fold, just because we were getting a good price. But when our opponent gives off a pretty significant tell, like he did with the illegal raise sizing and how fast he put it out there, I've said it in past vlogs and I'll say it again. You never have to put another dollar in the pot, no matter how good odds you're getting. You're getting 100 to 1 if you're truly confident that you've lost the hand. We do lose this one, but save an additional $80 making the discipline fold. After this hand, I play a few others, but nothing really significant happens. I eventually rack up and head out. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, that session was okay. Didn't go great, didn't go too bad. Numbers, in for 1,000, out for 700, so small loss, but I'm not upset about the way I played. It was a good session. I enjoyed playing at South Point and look forward to playing there again. Really excited to meet some cool players, too. I met a great, great guy named Dan. While we were playing, unfortunately, we didn't get into any really big hands together. Otherwise, I would have shouted him out. Uh, Dan's a great guy. He comments on most of my vlogs. Shout out to you, Dan. And then Ahmed, of course, another great guy. So while the poker itself didn't go my way, small loss, but met two really cool guys. So always happy about that. I look forward to meeting more of you guys in the future. I'll be in Vegas this Easter weekend. So if you're around, please come say hi. I have a really cool announcement for video I'm going to work on while I'm in Vegas that weekend. Stay tuned for the next vlog to hear that announcement. Till then, thanks for watching, guys. Good luck out there. So I bet out 